Hello, my name is Robert Strickland. I'm the author of GemCAD for Windows, a computer-aided design program for faceted gemstones. Today we're going to be designing a round brilliant with uh, nine mains instead of the usual eight mains. Okay, so we're going to set our symmetry to nine-fold mirror image symmetry. And uh, the first time through, I'm going to use a uh, 72 index gear. And you could cut a nine main stone on any index gear that's divisible by, let's see, four times nine is 36. So 72 is uh, a common index gear, or relatively common anyway for most faceting machines. So if you have a 72 NX gear, this is the preferred way of cutting a 9 main round brilliant. First thing I want to do is I'm going to cut an 18 sided girdle outline. Uh, what index do I use? Well 18 will go into 72, well 9 will go into 72 8 times, so 18 will go into 72 four times, so there's going to be four teeth separating each of the break facets. I'm going to want my main facet at 72, so I'm going to start off cutting my, my girdle facet at index 2 and following. As, you're, as you see, this is very much like cutting an eight-sided round brilliant on a 64 index. Four times, I mean, uh, eight times eight is 64, and nine times eight is 72. So angle of 90, once again, 9-fold mirror image symmetry, index gear of 72, angle of 90, index of 2, and we're going to cut that, cut those, and now you see we have 18 girdle facets, and they're at index position 2, and 6 and following. Okay, now we're going to cut our break facets on the bottom. So we're going to give it an angle, just pick an angle, 44 degrees. And we're going to cut these at the same index position, so index 2 and following. And I'm going to pick a point that's a little bit below the center line here on this edge. Now since I gave it an index of 2, I have to be on an edge at the two index. So either this edge or this edge or anywhere on this facet would be fine. So I'll pick a point on this edge. And again, a little bit below the center line, that'll put our girdle line a little bit above the center line after we transfer. So there we are. We got an angle of, what was it, 44 and an index of 2 and following. Now we're ready to cut our mains. And um, so I want to just size the mains by eye. So I'll position that point, pick that meet point there. I want it to meet this in this point right here. And then I want to pick a point on edge, and yeah, that looks about right. We'll click Use to Cut. And what's our index? It's going to be 72. So let's type in 72, or we can just use 0, because that's the same as 72. The ID position is 0. I'll hit Tab, and that'll fill in all these fields, and then I can get, click Cut Facet. There we have it. We finished our pavilion. Next, I'm going to Transfer. So here's a little Transfer icon. And... Um, Actually, I should have been a little below this. I didn't get my center line where I wanted it, but that's okay. So now we're going to leave some girdle thickness here. Uh, if I get too close to this point, however, it picks the point instead of the point on edge. So let me do hold down the control key. That's a way to get a point on edge that's or a point on facet that's closer and then the threshold for it to grab an edge or a point. So while holding down the control key, I'll press the left mouse button to select that point. And we'll click Use to Cut. And we need an angle for that crown main facet. 
and we'll just pick 36 degrees, pick a number out of the air, sort of. Index of 3. Index of, no, 2. <laughs> uh, tab, and then cut facet. Now we're ready to cut our mains, and we want to go make an edge go from here to here. So we're going to click on this point, use to cut, and then that ah, looks about right. Click on that point on the edge, and we've got point on edge, and use to cut. And now we need an index, and that's going to be 72 or 0. And then cut facet. So now we've cut our mains. Now we're ready to cut the stars. And they're going to come across like here. What's the index going to be? It's going to be halfway between 72 and 8, which is 4. So index of 4, not 43, but 4. And we're going to meet that point. And we're going to come across and cut to about there. So let's see what we got. That looks good. Table's a little big. Uh, I'm going to, let me do that again. I'd like the table to meet all of these points, so just one is sufficient. So let me click on that point, use to cut, give it an angle of zero. Index is not important for the table. And cut. Okay, so that completes our round brilliant for the nine-sided round brilliant with a 72 index gear. And uh, cutting instructions, you see we've got girdle facets to and following. Looks very much like an eight-sided round brilliant. Um, in fact, if you just leave off these two extra numbers, you could use practically the same instructions to cut an eight-sided round brilliant with a 64 index gear. So in review, in general, if you're cutting a design with a certain symmetry, you want to pick an index gear that's a multiple of that symmetry. So our symmetry here is nine, nine-fold mirror image symmetry, so we want an index gear that's a multiple of nine. Okay, this is all well and good, but 70, not all machines have a 72 index gear, or maybe you, have a mach you haven't bought one yet, or you don't plan to buy one because you hardly ever use it. So let me, what I'd like to do then is to cut this, a design very similar to this one on an index gear that we already have. So how do I pick the index gear? All right, well, one, one way to do this automatically is to use Jimcad scale command. Jimcad scale command, if it stretches the stone, will go through a routine to round off the indexes to the nearest notch while preserving the meet point, points if it can. So let's try that. Edit, scale, and I'm going to leave the default checkboxes, the Y checkboxes, and I'm going to leave these. We're going to multiply by 1 and divide by 1, so we're not going to stretch the stone. We are just want to use this to get us into the rounding of the index gears. Okay. So it's taken the common index gears and sorted them in an order from best to worst. Uh, you'll notice that the best, of course, is 72, and it's got an error of 0. And um, these errors are, are relative, but they are in order, and they kind of uh, are a sum of the angular difference of every facet to a notch on an index gear. So 72 had, we cut the stupid thing on an index gear of 72. So of course there's no error uh, for um, 72 index. The next best is uh, 120 index gear. And that has a relative error of 1.2 as compared to the 120. Oh, I hate 120 index gear because the teeth are too dang close together on, on my machine. So I'm going to use a 96 index gear. So let's click yes. And I'm going to pick the 96 gear. 
Now you can, in addition to these gears, you could type in any number you want in this field, but uh, we'll, we'll use 96 for now. So let me click OK, and Jimcat is finished, and there's uh, imperceptible difference in the in the stone. If I do undo and redo, really the only thing you see changing, you see some edges moving around, but mostly you just see the index gears changing. However, there is a little, not a problem, but a complication from this approach. You, you'll see that now instead of one set of girdles at 90 degrees, I have three sets of girdles at 90. All these are at slightly different cutting depths. And also instead of three, one set of breaks, I have three sets of breaks. So there's three sets of six. Uh, there is a simpler way to cut a design that looks almost as good. It won't look quite as good, but it'll look almost as good. In our next lesson, I will show you how to do that. So th this concludes the, this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to start from scratch with a 96 index gear and recut the stone.